Or, what, or, or it could be that they're right and you're totally doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that guy's me. <laughs> yeah, go and you say. What I'm saying is, yeah. uh, so, but to break that dopamine cycle, they have this one guy, like, you know what, no matter what they're saying, and even if they're right, your job is to die proving them wrong. Mm. And that's an alarm. Mm. That's an alarm. That's a wake-up call. Mm-hmm. Actually, by the way, the, the, the great Arab Israel war, they were notified by Mursa, even though every one was giving them this intel that, no, no it's not going to happen. They've just, you know. And, but, you know, the, health, the whole preparation committee was being triggered by this one guy that, you know what, that's my job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know you've made a decision that, you know, the Arabs are not coming in, but that's my job to make you get prepared. So they had that sort of a preparation that actually saved them. Mm. I mean, that's something which we should learn from. Mm. Again, we're twisting the tail a little too much. Let's just come back to simplicity. But my purpose is, mm. my purpose is simple. There are about 4 million people in England, mm. uh, Muslims, yeah. okay. about a million and a half in Canada, mm. and uh, close to two in America, Muslims. There are 250 million in Pakistan, and there are uh, about close to 200 million in India, Muslims. Okay, so you, you, you can see the map and you can see effects of uh, people like Muhammad Ijab and, you know, people who are actually calling the shots on dopamine cycles of human beings calling Muslims to some sort of a cause or a purpose, uh, boys and girls. Hmm. Now, unless we know the uh, effects of you as hijab scientifically, and I need you to prosper in those, you know what I'm saying? So that you know which, what works and where it works and make sure you become a lot more consistent and better so that these numbers start rising. And unless you put them into a, let's just say a 10 year plan of where you want these millions of people in 10 years, because they're not gonna remain 20 year olds in, in 10 years. They're gonna come into an effective career life whether we like it or not, they're going to have some sort of a job, which we naturally have to do because of whatever parenting that is being done, good or bad. They need to come from this capitalistic perspective to some sort of a power. And if we can connect that power in 10 years, even if 1% of these Muslim women and men at that time, mostly boys, that means, وَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ كُوَى that means a lot bigger force than any nuclear bomb that we have in Pakistan or wherever. Because that's millions of people coming together. But we're, we're not realizing how powerful you are. Because we're not doing the science behind this. And if you, How would one do the science behind this? Well, first of all, you should know what's... You should read into what people are you know, really sticking to. Rather than just you know, good comments or bad comments. Mm. Critiques or... Rather, you look into the fact that which video had what kind of dopamine value at what point in time, which actually triggered a bigger response. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if I look at a Hyde Park video and some atheist is debating with you, it's not going to create much dopamine unless mm. he comes up with an argument nobody else has. That shouldn't go on your YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. if you're actually consistently putting same sort of arguments on your YouTube video because you have to put some video because you, this is for learning everybody. Everybody has to learn because now everyone's going to watch every video. But that's going to reduce your dopamine value uh, invariably. Mm. Okay? So you need to design some sort. And that's why I said you stage it if you have to stage it. Because that's for the bigger good. And I'm not talking about stage it like, you know, acting as an atheist. No, no. <laughs> Coming up with the question nobody else has come before. And I'm talking about any subject matter. I'm just talking about atheism right, right now. Because atheism is, does not have that kind of dopamine, by the way. Richard Dawkins is not big enough. Okay? Because he's the only source. He's of, lost the X Factor now. He's too well, old. Well, I think uh, John Lennox is, is, is the guy who actually reduced all the dopamine. I mean, you know, he, he, he deflated the bubble. It's I mean, true. It's like, what, what did you do, man? Mm, mm. I mean, you know, I, he went in too soon in mm. terms of the, you know, Allah's plan, of course. Mm. So, what I'm saying is, when you're t- debating an atheist, it's you debating anybody under that umbrella. Mm. That umbrella is not big enough. Hmm. I know you're in England, most of the English is atheist, okay? I get hmm. it. But globally, atheism is not the biggest problem. Mm-hmm. There's a bigger, way bigger problem than atheism. Of course. And all those problems are dopaminergically, can be do- dopaminergically sorted. You need to see which one is, you know, 
in the in the sweet spot, the mm -hmm. green zone. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of things which are not even going to concern you, it's going to be like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, highly dopaminergic. But that's not your field of play. Could be, you know, some political, you know, uh, you know, thing going on in America or whatever. I think I'll be honest. From from my already my analysis, what I realize is that when we have these authentic exchanges, a lot of people find comedic value in a lot of the stuff that comes out of, of, our, of my videos. And what I realized, therefore, is that we're living in an age where really to get people's attention, you need to have a little bit of not just comedic value, but entertainment value, which it's is good. Yeah. yeah, which is why those are the fillers, if you like. Yeah. I mean, I, I was going to say that the way I was thinking of it in the next 10 years is something effective like a like a um, funnel. Right. So at the Literally, top of it, you've got word. you've got, like, if you like, the, the top of the funnel is more uh, content which is intended to entertain. Okay, like, so the entertainment value might be 60 or 70 percent of the actual content. And at the bottom, you have things we do in this very room. So, for example, we go through v effectively an education course. We've got hundreds of hours of education course here in the Sapiens Institute where we speak about, you know, feminism, liberalism, atheism, whatever it may be, the seed of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, in a critical way. So we've just done 10 parts of the, the critical seerah, for example. Um, these are things we do. So that's the bottom of the funnel for the, for the enthusiasts, for the ones who want the raw product. You know, the, the, the ones who can... Yeah, but you need to, uh, you know, triple the number of these enthusiasts yeah. every year, right? Mm. And these serious people who are mm. in their courses, mm -hmm. especially doing seerah or, or, you know, Arabi or, mm. or you know, Hadith, mm. these people are going to be there for whatever reason. No matter you're doing great in the videos or not, that's mm. a certain number. You need to know what that number is. And yep. if you're not increasing that number, you're not doing the job somewhere else. It's somewhere about 10%. Yeah, so you have to be about 30 odd percent, let's mm. say two years from now. Sure. So unless you're doubling this number, mm. you know, somebody else is servicing you this number, by the way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. I, mean, I can get a religious person regardless of whether I am religious or not. Mm. So I didn't do anything for that religious person to become religious. Mm. He actually is going to come and reject or select me after he listens to me. Mm. He was religious way before I even started speaking, right? Yeah. So these people are there because of this little basin that was created by somebody else 10 years, 20 years ago. Mm. Now you're in the game. Mm. And you're not just anybody. I'm not trying to, you know, boost your ego here. I'm trying to give you responsibility. Yeah, you're an energetic reaction. Yeah, you, 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 yeah, that's why I mm. spoke about this after we spoke about dopamine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, dude, this is a very big responsibility because mm. you and I are going to be fried 10 times more in the Day of Judgment. <laughs> you know, yeah, we, give you, and we, we give you a handle on people's minds and hearts. You mm. think that, you know, a lot of Sahabas didn't get that. Mm. You need to understand, you mm. know, we name our kids out of those Sahabas. Mm. But you're talking about millions of people. I mean, this is, this is not an easy pedestal to step on every single day. You're right. I and mean, you better be a good chess player with this, because mm. you need to know which, you know, where, where pieces with. You need to connect all of those, you know, clerics of America and then Canada. And I can't, because you know what? They don't know me. Mm. Right? Well, so, now, now they do. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. And even if they know me, they're not going to go through why I'm doing what I want to do, because it's not in English most of the time. Mm. And I'll tell you, I'll give you, an, you know, since we're recording this, your second entry in Piers Morgan, mm. uh, you know, I was thinking, why, why did you have to go? <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, you know why? Because hmm. there was a risk you took. Hmm. You took a risk at that level of charisma, which people are going to stick. Because I'm talking about those enthusiasts, remember that. Hmm. Everybody else doesn't even matter. We're talking about that real drain that's, you know, that real, you know, what's the word? That, that pure gold that, you know, seeps in after, through all of those funnels combined. Hmm. That is the number you need to increase because you're not going to get everybody to become a Muslim or be every Muslim to become an enthusiast or every, every enthusiast mm -hmm. to become a performer. Mm -hmm. But the only way to get performers is through that little, you know, you know, that final count that sticks to you every program, you're learning Hadith and Quran and, you know, whatever. Those are your, your real soldiers. And those are the numbers that you need to increase. So next time or the second time you went to the Pierce Morgan show mm. with, what's his name? Shmoli. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know somebody named him so appropriately. <laughs> Unholy Shmoli. Yeah. yeah. You pull out a card which I was not, I'm telling you, the psychologist, like, why did you, why did you pull this daughter's card? Why, why, why did you have to talk mm. about this? I'll tell you why, because mm. no matter what happens, there's a reciprocative damage mm. that is being done on the Muslim flank here. Mm. And I'm not talking about general Muslim, I'm talking about your enthusiasts. Mm. 
you, you see the risk. You took a risk, you know. Mm. Like, okay, he's got some guts to, you know, mm. it takes guts to, to, to do that. But did he do it by design or did he do it out of a reaction? That's the decision regular man is not going to be making. Mm. No, it was by design. Yeah, I'm sure it's by design. Yeah. Because, it's just, it's, you know, it's global TV you're talking yeah. about. But a regular girl or a boy mm. who's he's sitting, or going to sit in your Hadith class a year from now, he's mm. not equipped because he's not old enough mm. or wise enough mm. or politically savvy enough. You need to see, you're playing with a very, you know, crude number, which is very volatile right now. Mm -hmm. Let's just say 10%, just to say. Mm. You, for that to happen, to be in millions, and I, you need Canada, you need America, you need every Muslim uh, yeah. from English-speaking country. Mm. So this is a platform. I don't have, you have it. Mm. You, you have, have it in, in a different um, market now. Urdu is one of the top languages in the world. Now. Yeah, but you need to understand, I'm in England right now. You know why I'm in England? Mm. Because the people who speak Urdu, mm. they're... The conditions that they're in right now, mm. their IQ is no more than 90 right now. And they're not going to go up mm. to 100 in the next 10 years unless, of course, big exposure comes. And overseas, people who are speaking Urdu, speaking overseas, mm. they're uh, the finest examples of what they, we can actually, you know, uh, the, the good parts of the machine. They're not a machine. Mm. And you can, you can have some parts of the machine. I have some parts of the machine. I have fewer than yours. But you need my parts of the machine too. Of course. And you have no idea where I come from. They're so emotional. Mm. And that's the cultural thing. Mm. So they're going to watch your video. Thank God they don't know English. They'll be like, why would he talk about somebody's daughter like this? Mm. You know what I mean? But they know it's, uh, it's, yeah, know. it's know. who he is. I think they'll, they'll give it. Their... Yeah, I know. I mean, it was, it. It was, uh, you know, you had to take a, you, know, you, you shot him. <laughs> you shot him. You need him dead. You shot him. <laughs> but I'll tell you, psychological, mm. tactical error. Because that number mm. is, is my, 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 or your worth. Oh, the, the, the 10%. Yeah. Mm. Everybody else doesn't matter. Mm. He was going to give you a lot of things in the plate. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And in that show, by the way, that's the only real show where Pierce Morgan is pro you or a pro Muslim because <laughs> he has to compensate for the last episode. Yeah. He's compensating. Mm. You're not noticing it. Mm. He's overcompensating. Mm -hmm. And instead of you using it mm. to, you know, make them fight with each other, you'd mm. be like, you know what? Let's talk about your daughter's career. <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> this, this or, is it working? But you know, the thing is about it is that it's stuck in everyone's mind, including yours. Because, no, <laughs> but, yeah, come on. I had the dopaminergic reaction. No, it's not dopamine. It's called, I swear it's not, it's epinephrine. It? You actually raised, everybody went through a flurry of epinephrine. Okay. Like adrenaline. Oh, it's really? Like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what, what did you just do? So I got to manipulate their emotions like this, you know? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's you, conquest. You had him in the plate. You had Morgan in the plate. Yes, yes. And, you know, you could have searched Shmuley on him. It's like, you know what, here you go. You want, and you know what, he was actually playing, he was jabbing, you know, that guy just to overcompensate. Yeah, for, I saw that. Whatever. I did see that. Yeah, no, no, uh, Muslims should go through, uh, students should go through that tape. Yeah. See, see it as a study of the way Morgan is behaving. Yeah. And then you'd be like... He's not that important. No, no, it's not important. Him being important. Mm. It's about you being important. <laughs> You see that, I mean, you could have, I mean, I mean, everybody makes mistakes because you're mm. not in the game of, you know, politics and you're in the mm. game of religion. Mm. So we expect you to be authentic and, you know, make some sort of, by the way, mm. show your vulnerable side. Yes. Make sure you make some mistakes. When it, when it happens, just mm. let it happen. Because mm. if you're not vulnerable, that number's going to go down. That's actually one of uh, Robert Greene's, you know, laws of uh, power. He says that don't appear too perfect. One of the things that he says. Well. Not, yeah, well, there you go. He knows what he's talking about. So what I'm yeah. saying is, I didn't read I did that book for many reasons. <laughs> so other, the first few laws, I didn't really agree yeah. with. I couldn't go yeah, sure, a path sure, the sure. index. Yeah. But uh, see, that's not vulnerability you show. Mm. You you didn't show vulnerability when mm. you were talking about you know mm. to, to, to this rabbi. I mean, if he's, no, I know what you mean by vulnerability. You mean like, for example, the human side of the nervousness, or mm. you know. Oh, let me ask you something. Mm. When, if, you know, if somebody says, do you condemn Hamas? You know, you know, the classical answer of Muslim is not about yes or no. It's about, it's about Israel. Mm -hmm. So, about, yes, I condemn Hamas for following the footsteps of Israel. <laughs> That's your classic answer. Mm. This guy would not be able to budge after this. Like, what are you talking about? Mm. Uh, do you, yeah, I condemn Hamas for following the steps for the first time. Mm. They, it's not a Muslim thing to do to follow a Jewish, you know, footstep. But they followed the footsteps of Israel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mm. mean, it's like low cloud shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's your classic psychological rebuttal. But mm. the fact that they're playing on this, because it mm. doesn't even matter what they're playing on. Because mm. even if, you, you know, 
no matter what you do, they're gonna be the way they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's their design. He's, he's a job he's doing. He's got a, he's got family to feed. He's he's got a paycheck he's trying to follow. Yeah. You get it. But you, mm. you're not doing it for the paycheck. It's yeah. too important. There, there, there wasn't a paycheck there to begin with. Yeah, I know. Free, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. See, you're too important mm. in the audience that you is following you. Mm. He's not as important in the audience that follows him. See the difference? Mm. No, it's, I, I don't think, yeah, he, does, he doesn't have loyalists. No, it doesn't matter yeah. if he has loyalists or not. Mm. Even if he has loyalists, uh, he doesn't even have a cause. the career that he's in yeah. is not important in the books that the people, that his followers read. Mm. He's not even a biblical figure, not a preacher. Mm. He's a career guy who's doing his job. Mm. The thing that he's talking about represents money. Mm. And the people who are actually trying to make some sort of, a, you know, even if he's his, his big advocacy yeah. bank, yeah. they don't really, they're not going to follow him for more than a minute after the video is done. Sure. Your followers are going to go towards the afterlife or whatever you're going to say. Mm. You just see yeah. the, the trajectory. A lot of people have been telling me this recently, like, you know, it's true. Uh, and I think it has been a little, like nowadays, after the Piers Morgan engagements, things have actually changed a lot. Like in terms of the the demographic that I'm dealing with is a completely different. But that's a, that's a volatile demographic. The, mm. Your real demographic is going to come from directly from Hyde Park videos. I'm telling you. Yeah, those, they're the kind of somewhere mid range in the funnel. No, no, but those are the people who actually know you from you know your your growth of yeah. of you know becoming who you who you want to be in yeah. terms of, you know, what you want to achieve. Sure. Peace Morgan is nothing that we want to achieve something out of. No, I got you. Know, it's, it's, it's like, like the funnel approach. He's yeah, somewhere yeah. at the top of the funnel. Like, the thing with Shmoli, I considered it to be, a lot of it had to engage with entertainment. Because, like, look, in terms of dopamine, one thing that I've realized, and I do look at the, the trends and analytics and stuff, um, we look at viewer retention. I'm not sure if you played around with those on, on YouTube yourself. Like, I look at... Yeah, YouTube, YouTube gives it. Yeah, that's the, do the dopamine analytics, right? Yeah, you know. yeah, so, but... One thing I realized is that, you know, on my smaller videos, um, I've got an extremely high viewing um, retention. So it's like some small meaning, anything between like shorts, for example, one minute. But that doesn't count. No, it counts. It, tell, it still tells you what. You, no, no, you no that doesn't count in your, in your bigger plan. No, so you I got to you. Release a four hour thing. No, I've got a four hour thing as well. Yeah. So, uh, what, what's the, what's so the difference? for example, like if. Um, if I do shorts, it will have something like 95% retention, yeah? So someone who begins watching it will end watching it. But if I do a three or four hour engagement, if it's if it's a debate, like one I had with David Wood or one I had with Shmo I haven't got the access to Shmoli's one because it's on his channel, but the clips that we have, it would be um, much more than if I did a podcast for three or four hours, if that makes sense. So a lot of it has to be performative. For, for me to keep them on on board for that long, because effectively at the age uh, at the at the point of three or four hours, how, how, what is the percentage of the long videos retention? It like, can go up to thirty to forty percent. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not because no, because the number you actually have, mm. that's not bad. That's mm. that's like, like the David Wood debate. It's a four hour debate, so that we're talking about if we get thirty four percent because of the fact that there was you know a, there's a lot more dopamine there because of David yeah. Wood. So with that one, bro, I, I was just gonna say that I realized quite early on, I think that for me to keep these guys, 18 to 35 demographics, uh, that's my analytics, it's to keep them on watching, I need to be performative. It, it, cannot, it cannot just be educational. It cannot be just true, true. No, no, but professorial. It has to actually be, I have to be not just a public speaker, I have to be a public entertainer. Do you know what I mean? No, but I don't agree with that. I'll tell you mm. why. Because that's no. not going to have a bigger, a long enough half-life. Mm. That's going to run down. And then you're going to have to come up with new comedic you know, uh, skits. But if we don't do that, we're not going to compete. So no, in, in that sense, I'll you're tell you how you're going to compete way bigger. Go it's, it's just the blue ocean thing. Go wherever no one's going. Mm. See, your science is backing you up right now because of, alhamdulillah, your intelligence. Mm. Not because of your, you know, your, your gimmickry. Mm. You need to see. But do you not think it's a combination of both? There's people that are much more intelligent than I am. I, like, I, I don't you, run the numbers. I haven't run your numbers. Yeah. But run it. Do a survey. Bigger control groups. They'll tell you that they stop watching you or tend to when you're not being as intelligent as you naturally are. Mm, potentially, but I think a lot of it is to do with the, the comedic effect. Let, let me give an example, right? Okay. So, do you know, um, I, I realize when you look at other academics, or people that are in the purely academic field, if you look at their numbers, and I've gotten access to a lot of theirs, they get very low retention rates. Yeah, true. Okay, very, uh, even like if they're, they're speaking, Chomsky now because of his age, <laughs> but before he had, the thing is, I do like watching Two people. things, two things. Yeah, Let yeah. me interrupt you. Go on. 
it's called the Down syndrome. I call it the Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. You're actually reacting to what people are, are doing rather than making them react to what you were doing. Mm -hmm. You cannot delegate your uh, philosophy downstairs. Your yeah. philosophy has to be yours. Sure. Okay. So let's just say people are actually looking at you. You're, you're, you're more fun uh, uh, the, for the fact that you can come up with your creative comedic processes, little mm. structures that you mm. incorporate by design. Mm. Those people shouldn't be calling the shots on the, your next uh, you know, move, next move. But there must be a degree of reciprocity. Yeah, there is. I'll tell you yeah. what it is. Mm. That's what I would start with Zach and Nike. Mm. You should know that comedy does not even have that kind of dopamine. Mm. Not For, just comedy, but any it's kind not of about comedy. I'm talking about yeah, yeah. I'm talking about gimmickry. Gimmickry has sure. two different types. Sure. Zach and Nike is you know as much of a gimmickry as anything else. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's just talk about D dot. Yep. D dot is the best example. I'm the, if I had to choose one guy in the history of the planet, you know, public speaking, mm -hmm. D dot. Because mm. D dot was doing which nobody could fathom doing. It's mm. not about intelligence. It's not about education. He had a huge entertainment value as well. Yeah, but, you know, because it was not his, it was not his intelligence. Mm. It was not his great rebuttals. No, no, mm -hmm. no. Actually, if anything, the finest of his rebuttals were because of this other guy which he was quoting. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was about the guts he was showing. Mm. Nobody could dare say this to Christians or, you know, any other religion. The way he was, you yeah, know, charisma. That was the charisma. Mm. Charisma has its structures. Mm, yeah. Zakir Naik had his memory sure. of creating charisma, even though Zakir Naik is absolutely not a charismatic personality. I don't know. I think he is in his own way, you know. Well, yes, yes, you're biased in talking. Because otherwise, you know, you take it away. In Zakir his own Naik. way, he is. Are you kidding me with this? No, I mean, I love the guy. I would lie for this guy. But he's not charismatic. I mean, no, but in his own way. Uh, which is... Because how do we define charisma? Okay, let me just... That's exactly what mm. is breaking it down Sure, to. sure. Charisma is something which is an unachievable thing, which you want, and you know it's a universal thing that you, everybody would want, or most okay. of the people would want. Okay. There is unfounded. I do not have the formula to achieve. Okay. But I know it is there. It's like you mm -hmm. know a guy who can sing in really good tune. But how do you put that in a public speaking uh, context? Because, like for example, I can watch Messi play football and I can feel that that's yeah, he has charisma. Man. Yeah, he's charisma because we cannot even think about what he's doing right now. Yeah, but in, in a public speaking passing, like how do you? Well, like Zach and I can, the way he's pulling out references, mm. people who would want to do that mm. is like a superhero effect. Sure. Yeah, that is superhero effect. Yeah. Okay. Let's just call it the Superman effect for mm. now. Mm -hmm. So this this man, Superman, is Ubermensch, comes out. <laughs> okay. Because of his, uh, the, the way he's going to, you know, start quoting uh, uh, the, the ayahs, sure. even though any scholar would know the ayahs. Mm. But the timing and the enemy combine to make a trifecta. Gotcha. Mm. The timing is key. Mm. Hindu makes the dopamine value high and the machine, the machine gun, quoting mm. the ayahs. Mm. That combines to make the triangle. That is the trifecta of the charisma in Zakir Naik's case. Sure. In your case, you're debating an atheist. Mm. Now, if somebody knows the answer to whatever he's, this guy is asking you, your question doesn't even matter. Mm. Okay? I mean, your, your argument doesn't even matter. But if you come up with an argument which is unprecedented, this video is going to get, you know, subscribers. Because that is something which, you know, is an element of surprise. Mm. But the, there are videos I've done that, you know, I find it interesting you say that because uh, sometimes the most novel educationally novel things I've ever said and done are in this very room. It's not just novel. Yeah. It's not just novel. It's mm -hmm. Novelty has its own dopamine. Awesome sure. charisma. But novelty at a level very satisfies, mm. you know, some sort of a difficulty. It overcomes a certain difficulty. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but even that, even that, like a lot of the intellectual challenges. Okay. That people that, have. That's difficult. We yeah. do it here at the kind of like the, the institute and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then I would go to Speaker's Corner or anywhere else make a couple of jokes, do a couple of gimmicks, whatever you like, call it whatever you want, and that will get the attention. It's, it, it's kind of, it's, it is counterintuitive. Okay, okay, we're missing out on something. I'm, I'm, that's my mistake. I, 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 my mistake. Sure. Certain age yeah. sticks to you, doesn't really matter. Mm. For example, 18 to 20 year old. They're going to stick to you because of things which are not even charismatic. Mm. Okay. Mm. If a 30 year old or a 40 year old is sticking to you, that requires a lot more, what's the word, achievement. Sure. Okay. Because he's not just going to be looking at, you know, uh, you know your, your fast ones that you keep throwing. Yeah. He's going to be looking at something which is, you know, substantial, mm. valuable, mm. and uh, for, for the long haul. Mm. 
You know what I'm saying? This 18 year old is not even qualified to qualify you. Hmm. He's looking at that entertainment value only. Okay, he's not even understanding the depth of the argument that you actually constructed. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? If anything, he is the one who's going to, first one who's going to pound on you for making a classical mistake. And he's really good at that. <laughs> he can qualify that. He's not going to qualify your achievement, but hmm. he's going to qualify your mistake. Sure. So this guy is at risk, you know, he has a lose-lose situation. Mm. If he, even if he sticks, he's, he's going to give you a false confidence mm. of whether you actually did something which is, you know, intellectually really high. Mm. But that 40-year-old, they're going to be less in number, but if they're going to stick to you... I agree with that. I think no. that that's probably a good way of putting it. But let, let, let's put it to your output, for example, right? Okay. Because now that you're speaking to me, many people will be looking and saying, this guy's a good public speaker, especially if this is not meant to be his first language. He's speaking very well, and yeah. you're, you're articulating yourself very well. And... You even got good facial expression, good body language. All of that is there. If I were to strip all of that away and give you a very thick accent and remove your, your eloquence effectively, but the same information was to be in place, do you think you'd have the same effect? It would have dopamine, for sure. sure. It's a good question. It would have uh, a totally different age bracket, mm. which is you know, oblivious to you know, the visible apparent appeal of things and go to the heart, which is very less. Mm. But those will be just serious people, mm. okay? Now, I speak in an accent which I would have speak in because of the kind of schools I went to. Mm. But people who are going to stick to me because of my hands, my, my expressions, my body language, their- Your presentation, your overall presentation, how you look. Yeah, okay. If all of that was not present, and, yeah, I, and, no, I, and I put you into the body of a, of a man <laughs> that is, Oh, morbidly obese, okay? Okay. Who doesn't look the way you That's look. The first thing I think. Okay, okay, <laughs> morbidly yeah, obese, yeah. Morbidly obese, doesn't look the way you look like, doesn't speak the way you speak like, but you're saying the same information. To what extent do you think you're going to have the same effect? Okay, it's, 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 it's called, a, okay, without going to little yeah. real technicality of this, mm. first two minutes of my speech, mm. people actually portrayed the expectation of my body language. Yeah. So if, if I were obese, that effect would have been for the first two minutes. After that, the same thing would have happened, whatever is happening right now. Okay. Maybe the end two minutes maybe, would have left. Or, or maybe it would have, or there's a chance that if I were obese, mm. I had no hair, mm. and I had a very thick accent, mm. but whatever I'm speaking about, I'm speaking, mm. it could have created a bigger dopamine, uh, you know, arch over, over this. But if someone sees all that stuff that they don't like, is that going to cause any kind of... Well, a lot of people are going to, you know, you're going to see the comments here. They're going to hate the hell out of this, this conversation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, See, there are always going to be two extremes. If you yeah, are sure. touching a certain subject matter, mm. there's going to be a polar, you know, difference between two different. Mm. Some mm. people are going to love you, mm. and I know, and I haven't read your comments, by the way, <laughs> and some people are going to hate you. You're going to, knock, you're going to find less than 5% of the people are going to actually be like, you know what, I'm indifferent about. Mm. If it says something right, I'm going to say yes. No, no, I don't create indifference. I, I don't think you do either. I think oh, we, we yeah, we, yeah. That's why we're actually getting along on that well, because <laughs> it's a chemical thing. Yeah. We are stern. Mm assertive mm. and we seem as if we are only going to say something which we're sure about mm. now that's a good thing mm. but the flip side is the people are like you know what you seem to be overconfident arrogant uh, all that sure stuff. about things which you Dogmatic. shouldn't be sure about yeah. Yeah. yeah or i'm sure about something exactly the opposite on the same subject which you're sure about you know the other mm -hmm. side so it's going to come up with the two different tribes sure and that's okay that's actually a good thing more heat more friction more energy Okay, people who hate you also think about you, mm -hmm. and the way that they're th thinking about you because of that, the fact that they hate you, for the right reasons of philosophy. Oh, I like those kind of enemies. Mm -hmm. They actually keep you going, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, a, a friend of everybody is a friend of nobody. Okay, that's mm -hmm. you know, that, that means it's you're true. a classic hypocrite. Yeah. I mean, if you're not pissing off the wrong people, mm -hmm. you're not doing the right thing. Yeah. So, it's a, uh, it's a job of a Muslim to seriously piss off the, sh the shaitan. Like, mm. you know, if you're not hurting Satan, what are you doing in this planet? Yep. And nobody's not a Muslim. Mm. You have to be somebody. So you better have some sort of a, a friction and some serious, you know, cuss words flying around, you know, just because of the fact that you're, you know, you're, you believe in whatever you believe in. Mm -hmm. And that really enforces your belief. Again, coming back, I think there should be a lot more science going into your your thought process no you're helping me think about it it's just that i i do i'm a student of um rhetoric okay. that's why yeah so i i i'm not a rhetorician by academic trade by any but you gotta be thing. sorry that's... not by academic trade. I, I don't do like um what do you call it reviewed journals on it or anything like that but i always watch 
people. And the first thing that whoever they're speaking or they're doing a public speech or they're speaking on the radio, wherever it be, the first thing I'll analyze is how they're speaking. The Prophet ﷺ told us, إِنَّمَا لَفِي الْبَيَانِ لَسِحْرًا That mm-hmm. certainly in eloquence there's magic. magic. So the idea of, and there's a beautiful, actually in Athar, which um, basically Hassan al-Basri, one of the Tabais, he came to Muhammad ibn Sirin, who was actually a dream interpreter. Yeah. And, and one of the dreams that he had was that he was on top of a trash heap um, and he was you know, using a, an instrument, yeah. like a flute or something. Flute. It was a flute. It was a flute. And um, he asked him to interpret and he said, well, this means that you're going to be a fantastic public, people are going to, public speaker and people are going to be listening to you. But what's really interesting in that dream is that effectively music was being compared to public speaking. Yeah. Okay. And I, I do think there's a great flesh that joins those two elements. A, for me, it's almost like if you ask a musician, now I'm not one of them, but if you ask a musician uh, to, to analyze Be- Beethoven's symphony, for example, one of, one of the symphonies, or Mozart's works, or whatever it may be, right? Uh, and he says, this is what's happening, and this is what it is, and this is why it's good, and this is why it's the best, or whatever. Uh, then they'll be able to do so. I think I, I've developed so some... Ironic. Some, something of a, a sensibility of being able to look at something and say, no, okay, no, this is it's, why it's good. I so, actually use the same dream mm. to come up with why music is haram. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. Yeah. And that's the dopamine that I'm talking about. You know, see, mm. every music uh, note has a wave. Mm. Wave has a crest and a trough, this amplitude. But before you get to this, yeah. I just, to land the point, I was going to say that. So with someone like yourself, because I've, I look at it and I, I do analyze, um, you have two things clearly to offer, right? Like uh-huh. using you as a case study, right? Not Jack and I or somewhere else. But the two things that you have to offer, or any other successful public speaker, is the content of their words. And you can put it this way, what they're saying and how they're saying it. Right? Simple as that. Yeah. Uh, the reason why you become successful is because of both. Because if you could be an academic with exactly, I mean, many people talk about dopamine nowadays. Many people have researched dopamine to a very, very, very high level, written countless peer-reviewed journals. Uh, many of them probably going to be watching this and say, oh, he got this one wrong or that, because everyone now has become a scholar, right? True. And, do you know what I mean? But this is what it is. There are many people out there that are doing biology and masters and PhDs and so on. And they could sit here on this very chair and talk to me about the very same things as you've spoken to me about. Maybe they wouldn't be able to mesh it in with the Islamic and the politics and all that because it's interdisciplinary yeah. what you've done. However, to do it in the way that you're doing it and to create that product, this is where, if you like, the magic is. This is where, hmm. That's why I said the public speaking, the dopamine is not just created by the information. It can't be because if it was, um, it's just like saying, okay, well, if I put these notes together. Yeah, it's, it's going to create the same thing. It's, yeah, it's, it's not. It's not. not. Yeah, it's not because the, the like conversation said, is about between the speaker yeah. and the audience. It's yeah. not just the speaker and his content, mm-hmm. and the audience is going to bring his own chemistry. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Yes, I think you should go into not too much because don't overthink or overkill it. Sure, because if you're going to break your natural self, it's not going to remain dopamine. It's got anyway. to be authentic. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Plus, it's not going to have the same kind of dopamine. Yeah. Your uh, the spontaneity is spontaneity is your dopaminergic source. Sure. And if you're actually staging everything or, you know, no, no, no. Fra- Frankenstein everything mm-hmm. down to, mm-hmm. you know, a construction of what our video is going to mix, it's going to lose the, the charm anyway. Yeah. However, having said all of that, mm. you still need, because as a Muslim, because I'm telling you this, unless you, okay, let's, I'm going to give you an example. Mm. I'm going to bring you 5 million Muslims in the next 10 years so that you can, like passing the baton, that here you go, they're prepared. At a certain level, I marinated them, and you please cook them mm. for me, okay? And that's something which you should be getting from all the people of the world who are actually in my shoes. That you know what these people do not understand English, mm. and I've prepared them enough to actually think critically, go into the next global level, you know, uh, influence, literally mm. influence. I my, actually my my the, the the subject matter of my presentation right now in England is the architecture of influence. Really, I've broken it down so that kids here can actually influence coming into political political uh, arena, coming into power, and uh, affecting the Muslim world. Mm. Because uh, Pakistan is not going to affect the Pakistani, you know, uh, intellect. Mm. It has to be coming from America or England because of whatever Victoria did. Mm. 
Now, she did whatever wrong she did, but she did help create a platform. Mm. We're Muslims, are resi- 4 million are resigning right now. We might as well just use it while we're here mm. you know, or just get the hell back. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. you're not going to use that platform, which Victoria did mm. create, mm. then, you know, we are the enemy. Mm. Because somebody else is using the same platform and we're here. They didn't say, don't use it. Don't mm. be English. Well, you are English. Mm. You're naturally going to use a lot of that platform. So might as well just use it for the bigger objective. So sure. that's what I'm saying. Mm. My dopamine would be like, okay, how many people can I give you? Mm. Or how many people can you give the other guy? Mm. Or wherever the power is needed. Because this is a game of attrition by the end of the day. Sure. It's not about how many guns or bullets we have. It's mm. about how many people we have, mm. how many minds do we have. And mm-hmm. we're not going to get billions. There are only three or four hundred people in the last 500 years that are still paving the ways of how Sweden is going to write the next foreign policy. And there's some philosopher sitting in France or was sitting in France or Italy or Spain or Hume or Descartes or Kant. They're still affecting, you know, John Locke is still calling the shots on the American Constitution. But whoever is going to, you know, <laughs> it's some guy mm. who is using his mind. Nietzsche is actually become a fashion now. Mm. Ubermensch is like, a, you know, a go to word for every boy who's going to commit suicide mm. or not. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So Muslims say there are no more books of Fyodor Dostoevsky. Mm. They created the bigger change in their time. Now those books are changed by YouTube videos. Same age of audience which were reading Fyodor and now watching YouTube now. Yeah. And with the same intent, even deeper and greater intent. Mm. So you matter more than Dostoevsky right now. For Russia, mm. you're, he was not as global as you are. Imagine that. Mm. But he is now, I think. Well, and still not yeah. going to be because the trend is YouTube now. Mm. If he were on YouTube, I would be like, yeah, you know, you level playing field. He's now. the guy. <laughs> level playing field. No, no, it's not still. Mm. See, that would have been a good adversary mm. because he was never going to, the way he wrote, if he had spoken like that, he's never going to get a, re- mm. a subscriber, right? Because <laughs> that's a little too, you know, mm. too, uh, too, too, he builds up too much. Mm. Okay. You've read Crime and Punishment, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he builds up too much. I mean, it's, I think it's the best book. Do you uh, think so? Oh, yeah. I, 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 because... Muslims are suffering from one thing. I think it's a bit overrated. I think Jordan Peterson probably propped it up a little bit more than it should have. No, he is too emotional about the totally different part of the book. Mm. You know why I like the book? Mm. A Muslim is not crying over his own sins. Mm. This is the only book where, he, where, where Raskolnikov cries over his own sins. Mm. We are not guilty in front of our own selves. A mm. Muslim is justifying his sin and a Christian is not. Mm. At least he's confessing. <laughs> I mean, he's not justifying it. He's confessing to some priest somewhere. Mm. Because he calls it, yeah. you know, it's in. You mentioned Nietzsche. I mean, this, uh, I think there's a profound impact that Nietzsche had on... Yeah, uh, I know. I mean, I, I used to like... Okay, you know, I come from the land of Iqbal. Have you heard the name Iqbal? Uh, yeah, of course, Mahad Iqbal, yeah. Yeah, you know, if people think he's stealing from Nietzsche. Nah, I'm really? telling you, people, yeah, well, yeah, all kind of people go. I don't. Mm. You know, he came up with a totally different concept because he was a follower of the Prophet mm. He knew Uber mentions, like, you know... You couldn't come up with, you couldn't construct the wings right, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot more that a man could do, and we have that man who did it. Coming back, mm. crime and punishment comes up with this concept, which I think a Muslim man is missing right now. Sure. And he's a religious person, Fyodor. He came up with it from the Bible. He came up with it from Matthews, actually, from John as well. If you cannot possibly punish your own self for your own sin, then there's not going to be any good. And that's a very Muslim concept. You know, that's Tazkiyah. Mm-hmm. That is Tazkiyah. That dude did not know Tazkiyah, right? Mm-hmm. But he came, in, came up, he actually combined both of these, John and Matthew, mm. one verse each, so that he can actually confess to his own self. Mm. I mean, he, this, this is not even the complete picture. Are you talking about the end of the book where Well, when, when, when Sonia is talking about, uh, you know, committing suicide and you know, oh, okay. the, the prostitutes. Because he's giving him a lecture. Yep. He's actually speaking through Sonia to Raskolnikov. Oh, sure. Yeah. And that's where he's actually, you know, Thinking that, yeah, you know what, this is... Uh, by the end of the day, he is one writer writing three different characters, right? Mm. That's what most of the readers are getting. You know, it's, it's not actually Sony and the prostitute. Mm. It is Dostoevsky, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that actually, you know, really, you know, you know stirs you up that, you mm. know what, this is why am I not thinking like this? Mm. But every Muslim man naturally had to go to Tuskegee. The word was as common as it gets. Sure. And the fact that we cannot confess to any priest... That actually t- puts a harder or a bigger burden on my shoulders. Mm. That, who, who am I conf- confess to? Oh, you go into the sajda, man. That's called Toba. You know? Isn't that what Iqbal said? He said that, um, something about, you know, a thousand uh, prostrations. Or, do you know the, you know the, the thing I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, uh, it says, you know, that one sajda that you, that is so heavy on you, is yeah. going to relieve you of, of the burden of a thousand. 
Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's in, it's in Urdu. It's, oh my God! If I only wish you knew. Urdu. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know it? Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. 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 It's, it's too amazing. It's too amazing. Mm. So again, you know, uh, so how can I possibly be tilted towards Nietzsche when, when, when we have Iqbal, you know, mm. actually. And, but, you know, it's ironically the same time, you know, mm. coming up with the same sort of concept at the same time. Mm. My father was into poetry and he had actually, you know, come up with, because my own poet, poet is not Iqbal, it's another guy. Mm. So What's his name? He's, you wouldn't know him because he's not into philosophy. Sure. Uh, Shukayb, you, okay. Shukayb yeah. Dilal, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a classical poet you know, in, in Pakistan, mm. just poetry, nothing else. But my father was writing in Alaska, mm. whatever he was writing in Lahore, you know, same kind of concept. So it happens. I mean, yeah. I understand this, this, this happens. Coming back, why are we talking about just crime and punishment? I'm talking about your effect. You are writing crime and punishment. You just <laughs> have to look at it from that angle. Mm. Every video of yours is a chapter from a book. Mm -hmm. And someone is going to write it, inshallah, after you die or whenever, you, you know, you, you, someone is going to come up with this. Because of the kind of seriousness you're putting into your work. And that someone is not going to do justice mm -hmm. because he's going to be, you know, writing about you. So maybe I need to do an autobiography then, eh? like well, yeah, Malcolm yeah. X. Yeah, again, you know, yeah. well, I, I would assume that it would be like Malcolm X. Have you seen his, um, um, well, hopefully it doesn't end that way, but have you, seen, have you read his autobiography? I was yeah, I have read it. Nice. I have gone through so much detail about this guy. That's why I'm uh, thinking there was a lot more. Of it. Most of the people that know Malcolm X don't even know Malcolm X, mm. you know, unless you, of course, go through whatever he was going through. And it's not just him, by the way. It's all the nation of Islam, actually, you know. Mm. It's, uh, some, only some knew that he was not actually nation of Islam. Yeah, you know, it's well, he was at one point and then he left. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Well, he was not. I mean, he's, he's, he's not. Like he was his own a totally different. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a totally different concept. But uh, again, you you're right. Somebody is going to make a Malcolm X out of you. Maybe, hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> not to get shot yeah. then at the age of thirty-nine. I wish I, I, I do, that's the exact opposite of what I. I want to get shot. You know, mm. I swear. Mm. I wish. You know, I, I don't want to die in a hospital or a bed. Mm. That's not. That's not the way to go. It's a good point, actually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now you've made me think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not going to provoke it because that will be suicide. Yeah. In, in, but I am going to ask for it. You know. Mm. You know. Remember the the prayer of uh, Sahib Nabi yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he said, "Oh my God, we both prayed for the same thing, mm. and he's successful, and I I, I failed because he was he's martyred. Uh, that's Ahad, right? Yeah. The night of Ahad. Night Amazing. of Ahad. Amazing. Yeah. We're actually going to have a whole lesson on that. Um, yeah. Soon. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, mm. see. I mean, I see you. I swear to you, I see, I see, uh, I see a number, and I see a number because uh, the Prophet said that on the day of judgment, uh, the only sense of pride that I will have is the number of you know Muslims in the Ummah. You think that that totally changes the way you look at your videos? I look at your videos, you know, and that should change the number, uh, the, the the way you look at numbers, because you need to create that little, you know. Um, plan of how to get those numbers because it's all about who you're bringing in. It's not about who's winning what debate. Mm. It's about who you're bringing in because mm -hmm. no one's going to remember any argument. Mm. No one's going to remember a joke or, or, you know, no one's going to remember which video I liked, what, what year and, what, and th that doesn't really stick. Yeah, what does stick is what uh, Unholy Shmoli's daughter's uh, line of business is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm what? telling you, she what? might, she might convert, man. Yes, yeah, she might. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but, on that bombshell, I, I want to really thank you for coming today. No, are you kidding um, me? Thank you for having me. Honestly, so. it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, I feel like I've been coached myself, actually, for now. It's, it's I, I have that beer curse. I'm sorry. It's an occupation. No, no, it's, it's really good. No, it's good. It's, I, I like it. It's, it's good that you come with, with that. And people are going to be wanting to watch your videos. So you're going to put your name, which is Sahar al I'll put the spelling on, uh, on this video. And, of course, they're going to be subscribing to you as well and doing following your, your work your great work in Urdu I, language I, yeah uh, well they're not gonna well there is a lot of English work but uh, mm -hmm. we're gonna be because I'm on uh, this English tour yeah. and I'm going to be going to Norway now it's only English mm. uh, so there's gonna be a lot more English content but my, my, my message to it's not about coaching or, or you know psychology it's about 
coming into the mission, I think more Muslims should actually start writing down a mission statement that, you know, in next 10 years. I mean, start chasing longer lives, start chasing awesome deaths. Beautiful. Yeah. That is excellent. Yeah, that this is, is this is the, the least, that's the, the start of Islam. 